Now in this video of C language, we will cover a very important concept that is the memory management. The one of the most beautiful thing which I feel in C language is the direct interaction with the memory. Means the concepts like pointer allow us to access the memory area and the address of that particular memory directly. Probably no other language or very few other languages has the same capability that the C and C++ has. So, a programmer can do a direct core programming out here which will cause a less time consumption because whenever you are doing a core programming, a system programming, you very frequently require to access the memories and hardwares. And here we can directly approach that through the address required by the pointers. So, here the memory management is a very decent thing which we can learn and a programmer can enhance his skill at the core level also. So let's see what all is here. Like whenever you execute a program written in C, it follows these four kind of different uh, memory segments. Let's start with the code segment, then data segment, heap segment and stack segment. And this is how your stack will go on. Like first of all, whenever a program writes a code, compiles it, the program finally gets translated in a system language which makes the execution. So that equivalent code which is translated for the machine is pushed in the code segment as you can see here also where the program equivalent machine instructions are stored means after the compilation there is an object file when that object file will be executed the instructions will be uh, translated into machine code and then those particular instructions will be uh, stored temporarily in this particular segment which will be there during the execution next is the data segment when you write a code in C you may define some global variables as we have already covered those so all the global variables or any variable which is not associated with a particular function will be stored in this data segment where all the global variables of your program resides. Now next is stack segment. Whenever you write a program in C language we have the number of methods. We start with the main after that we can create n number of methods. And whenever you want to make them execute, you have to call it. So for that particular situation, whenever you call a method, all the methods will be loaded in a stack segment. Along with the methods, all the local variables which are defined in the method will also be allocated in the same segment. So stack is something which will uh, load all the methods inside it. And as the name says, it's a stack segment. Like first of all, it will be your main method. Suppose main method is calling m1 method. Then in the stack, m1 will be on the top of main. Suppose m1 is calling some another method called m2. Then it will be again on the top. Since it is last in first out, LIFO concept. So last in means m2 will be popped out. Then m1 will be popped out. And at the last, main will be out of it. And as soon as main is out of it, the program will be terminated. And at last, there is a heap segment which is used for the dynamic memory allocation. So far, we were not interacting with the dynamic memory allocation because majorly it's a part of data structure. But yes, the base of data structure will also be C or C++. So we'll cover a bit of dynamic memory allocation here now. So whenever during the execution you want to allocate some memory, then all those memories will be allocated on the heap segment. Now let's see why this dynamic memory allocation is actually required. So we have already covered the concepts like array, where during the definition of the array we give this size and later we will not be able to change that. So whenever there is a bulk amount of data we want to store, so there will be two problems, either the underflow or the overflow. Underflow means if you have defined the array of size 50 and later you put only 20 values, then remaining 30 values will be wasted. So that is the underflow. 
Similarly, if we have defined the array of size 50 and I want to put maybe more than 50 later as per the requirement, maybe we are not very sure how many elements we are going to get. So that will be overflow means 50 spaces, 50 memories will not be able to store more than 50 values. So that will be the overflow. So for to get rid of such problems like underflow and overflow, we have the concepts of this dynamic memory allocation. So here we can allocate as much as we want. So let's see what all methods we have for the dynamic memory allocation and deallocation. Because when the memory is stored by at compilation time in the stack, so as soon as your program will be terminated, your stack will be unloaded and the memory of variables will be released. But since here we allocate the memory dynamically, not particularly in the stack area, so it is a programmer's responsibility to deallocate the memory as well by the time you are done with it. So here for allocating the memory, we have the method called calloc. All right, calloc and malloc are the two methods here majorly for allocating a memory space. But what is the difference? Like calloc will take two arguments, how many blocks you want and what should be the size of each block, each memory block. So you will have to tell that in the calloc. And calloc also initialize all those memory blocks with a zero means it also puts a value where in malloc you just need to tell how many bytes you want to allocate you don't have to give anything else that num is the number of bytes and it will not initialize those memories with any particular value it will be containing a garbage once you have allocated the memory either through malloc or calloc next is you can use the free method by passing the particular address as soon as you will do that that particular memory will be released and that can be used for some other works internally once you have allocated the memory suppose uh, 30 bytes and later you are required 40 bytes so you can use realloc method for the extension for a new size maybe you want to less memory or more memory so you can reallocate that using realloc method so there are few programs as well like using malloc as here you can see i have just passed a single parameter 15 into size of character so if it is 1 15 into 1 is 15 bytes will be allocated for this and here in calloc 15 means i want 15 blocks and what should be size of each block the size of a character all right so ultimately i am allocating the same memory but the way to allocate is different so let's see practically how can we do a dynamic memory allocation here so here you can see for dynamic memory allocation i have used the malloc function here with the single parameter which will tell the size which i want to allocate during the execution as i want to allocate the space for 15 characters so i have what i have said is 15 into size of characters whatever the size of character is that is 1 byte into 15 that is 15 bytes will be allocated later i have type casted it to the char pointer because the return type of malloc is void pointer so if you will keep it as a void only you will not be able to do any arithmetic operation with the pointers so that's why i have just made the typecast and i have typecasted that to the uh, character pointer and then i assigned the address to the arr since i have just now assigned the address so obviously it will not be null but still in any particular case if there is any l uh, null also then I will just check that if error is equal to null, I'm, I printed allocation fails and exit failure. The macro which I have used to terminate the program which will send minus one to the system. Now if it is not null then obviously it will not get exited and uh, here I have called strcpy from string.h string copy and I have assigned the value to this point to that particular location. And later I just printed that and as soon as the retrieval is done if everything is done later at last I can free that space using free function so when I'll execute this you can see 
the string is tutorials point the value which I have assigned apart from malloc I can also use calloc which will just give one change like the number of parameters as here you can see here in calloc I have passed two parameters 15 the number of spaces and the size for each block so 15 blocks would be there and each uh, block would be of one byte that is the size of character and rest of each and everything will remain same like I'll check again if it is not null then it will proceed execute it will proceed here and will copy the value will take it and later we will release the memory so again the output will remain same but as I said like calloc will initialize the memory blocks as well with zero but in case of malloc it doesn't initialize the space but it will just keep the garbage value inside that means by the time you will retrieve the data you will just get a garbage value